Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and this is Free PBX 101 version 15, part 31 where we're gonna be talking about inbound routing or inbound routes. Inbound routes are basically how are we getting calls into free PBX. So when a call comes in from the outside world through our SIP trunk or through an analog line, we're gonna be directing that call somewhere. It might be your main IVR, you might wanna direct a call directly to an extension, you might wanna direct a call directly to a queue as we're gonna do in this video, but there are a few options for how you can do that. FreePBX does not care how many phone numbers you have. It has the ability to route basically an unlimited amount of phone numbers wherever you want those phone numbers to be routed to. Now I say unlimited, there is obviously gonna be some upper limit in terms of the resources of the CPU and RAM of the hardware that you're using to run FreePBX, but theoretically you can do as many of these uh, inbound routes as you want. Okay, so before we get started, if you guys are enjoying this series, make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions for two to three brand new tech videos every single week. Also follow us on Twitter at CrosstalkSOL for all of the latest updates. From the dashboard of FreePBX, we can get to inbound routing by going to connectivity, inbound routes. Throughout this series, we have been working with this default inbound route, although we haven't really dug too deep into how it works and what it does. But you can see here, or right, let's go ahead and edit it actually. So we're gonna edit the inbound route. Description is default. Now, I always recommend having a default inbound route, a sort of catch-all inbound route. And what do I mean by catch-all? Well, what I mean is when a call comes into your PBX, there's two different ways that you can route that call one place or another. You can route the call based on the phone number that the caller dialed, or in other words, the DID, and you can also route the call based on the caller ID of the person who's calling in, okay? Uh, or you could do both if you wanted to. So in this case, we're, we have what's called a catch-all route because we're not routing on any DID number, we're just saying take any phone number that was dialed and we're not routing on any caller ID number. We're saying take any caller ID that they're calling from and we're gonna route that to, uh, in this case, call flow control weather, which is, according to our IVR design, the place where calls should come in. But now look at this. We have this cloud here for our main phone number, 272-207-2040, and that goes to CFC weather but over here, we have a different phone number, 272-770-0266. And that phone number goes directly to our sales queue. Okay, so this phone number bypasses our call flow control, it bypasses our time conditions, our business hours, our IVR, it bypasses everything and just dumps callers directly into the sales queue. Okay, so how do we set this up? Let's first go through our settings uh, for the default route, and then we will jump into how to route a call specifically on the DID that was dialed by the remote caller. Okay, so description is default. We're not routing on the DID. We're not routing on caller ID, so we're leaving those blank. Uh, we're, again, just like all other videos, if something's not a super important or, or often used feature, I'm basically just gonna skip over it. That's what I'm gonna do with caller ID priority route. But these next items you might want to change, right? So there's alert info. This is what ringtone are we using when someone calls in from this particular inbound route? So when we set up phone systems for customers, we typically have one ringtone that we use for internal extension to extension calls. And then we have a different ringtone that we use for calls coming in from the outside world. So when a phone starts ringing at someone's desk, they will be conditioned to know if that's an internal caller or an external caller just by hearing a different ringtone. This only works with Clearly, Crosstalk, Sangoma, or Digium phones natively in FreePBX, but there are ways that you can do it with, um, you know, like Yealink phones and other phones as well. Then we have ringer volume override. So basically if someone has turned their ringer all the way down, we can say, no, 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 for this inbound route, we're gonna set their volume at X. 
Then we have caller ID name prefix. And in this case, you might want to say main colon. It's basically what shows up on the screen of the phone when someone calls in through this inbound route. Okay, so main colon just lets us know that it's going to say main and then the caller ID of the caller. It's going to let us know that like where they called in to. Uh, music on hold, we can set to default or you can create your own music on hold playlist. I don't think we're going to cover that in this series, but just be aware that you can create different sets of music on hold and use them throughout the system, uh, just like right here. And then our destination is call flow control weather. Okay, so easy enough. Let's look at some of these other tabs though. Uh, normally you don't ever have to touch anything in these other tabs, just telling you. But in the advanced tab, you can do some weird stuff like set the country tones. If you're in uh, you know, Belgium, for instance, you're gonna wanna hear different dial tone sounds and busy sounds and ringing sounds uh, as it, it, than if you're in the United States. Uh, and then a whole bunch of other stuff. Again, contextual help here. Just hover over the question marks if you wanna know what these things do. The privacy tab is actually pretty interesting because privacy manager basically says when someone calls in and they don't have a caller ID, or if they have a caller ID that says like unavailable or private or something like that, we're not gonna accept that call. We're gonna instead redirect them to a recording that says, it looks like you don't have a caller ID, enter in your caller ID phone number and then we're gonna send the call through. So you're kind of forcing callers to add a caller ID. Now this isn't as prevalent as it was before. Most calls have caller ID now. Now they're just a lot of robo calls and stuff, right? So calls that, you know, are just junk calls can come through because they do have a caller ID. But if a call happens to not have a caller ID for whatever reason, uh, the privacy manager can be used to sort of intercept that call and make them enter their caller ID before that call can go through. Facts we're not gonna talk about. We don't do detecting faxes through inbound routes. Uh, and then if we look in other, we have some options, for instance, for call recording. So we can say yes, force, don't care, no, never. Uh, a call recording can be its own complete separate video. Uh, basically, if you wanna turn on call recording for any call that comes into this inbound route, just set this to yes. I'm gonna leave it on don't care here. Uh, I should also mention, uh, just as a caveat, the laws surrounding recording calls varies from state to state and from country to country, okay? So before you turn on call recording of any sort in your free PBX, make sure you understand the laws surrounding on, uh, you know, surrounding what you're allowed to record and what you're not allowed to record. Uh, and then we have a few settings for different types of caller ID lookups. So caller ID typically comes in through the SIP trunk, right? It's delivered along with the call but there might be situations where you wanna use a different caller ID lookup source, like a national database or maybe an internal database of customers where if someone calls in as a particular phone number, we wanna rewrite the caller ID name with the actual name of their company as it's known in our CRM software or something like that, right? So those are what the caller ID options are used for generally. Uh, in our case though, we're just gonna leave all that stuff default. We're gonna click submit and apply config. All right, so there we have our main default inbound route. Uh, and now we wanna add a second one because we have this sales direct DID that needs to bypass all of this junk and go straight to our sales queue. So let's set that up next. We're gonna be routing based on this phone number or routing based on the number that the caller dialed. So we're gonna say add inbound route. We're gonna call this sales queue. And then the number that we wanna route on is 12727700266. Now that is 11 digit US dialing. That's the pattern that we're matching on. This is gonna vary from server to server, right? So sometimes it's gonna be 10 digits, sometimes it's gonna be 11 digit. If you're in a different country, it's gonna be however many digits you would normally be routing on. If you have a PRI and you're doing routing, sometimes it's three or four digits, what's called DNS digits. So it varies a lot. And you can actually tell how to route or how many digits you need to route in asterisk. So if a call comes through, and it doesn't match an inbound route, it'll actually have an informational message that says, hey, we noticed this DID, and it'll tell you what the actual DID is, you probably want an inbound route for this, right? So it'll actually tell you, hey, this hit your catch-all route, you know, if you wanna route it separately, 
this is what you need to route based on. In our case, it's 11 digits for crosstalk SIP. Uh, we're not gonna route on any caller ID, we're just gonna route on the DID itself. And then for the destination, we're gonna say queues and sales queue. Uh, and that's it, we don't need to change anything else, we're gonna say submit and apply config. Okay, that's done, and now let's go ahead and test dialing in. First, we're gonna call our main DID which is 272-207-2040. Thank you for calling Dunder Mifflin. If you know your party's extension, you may dial it at any time. Okay, and so that went through to my main IVR. And why did it do that? Because I dialed this number, call flow controls in normal mode, so it flowed through to my holiday time conditions. We are not in a holiday, so it came over to my business time conditions. We are during business hours right now, so it went to IVR main. That is exactly what that call was supposed to do. Now let's call the sales direct DID 272-770-0266. All right, dialing now. So my phone was ringing here. It said sales in front of my caller ID and we were immediately put on hold. We were hearing hold music uh, through my phone here, right? So that means that we successfully redirected this DID directly into that sales queue. And that works for any DID, right? Or any destination. If you wanna route a call direct to a person, to an announcement, directly to a ring group, whatever you wanna do, you can route calls based on the DID or you can route calls based on the caller ID. If you have specific customers that are like VIP customers, you might wanna route their caller ID to a priority queue to give them priority access into the system or something like that, right? There's all sorts of different ways that you can route these inbound calls. Okay, so that's gonna do it for inbound call routing in our next video. Uh, actually, that wraps up this IVR completely. We're done with the IVR, which is wonderful. Uh, in our next video, we're gonna talk about paging and intercom. So make sure you like this video. If you got something out of it, subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions so you don't miss any of the future videos, and we will see you in the next one.